I want to talk about death. Well, if this video isn't already demonetized, it will be because we're going to be talking about killing particles all over the place. And YouTube is not going to understand that properly. So welcome to this video. We're going to be talking about our particle death, as uh, you might have guessed so far. So if we look into our previous uh, particle system that we made last time to show off dynamic parameters, uh, you can see that these particles at some point cease to exist. And they have an age and a lifetime. And when their lifetime ends, they die. That is the terminology that we tend to use. But we can also prematurely kill a particle. Meaning that if certain conditions are met, we want a particle to destroy itself before it reaches the natural end of its lifetime. So let's just make something that shows us how that works. So I'm going to make, guess what, a new emitter. And we'll call this, uh, this will be a omnidirectional burst, and we'll call this uh, death, because we're just in a good mood like that today. I'm going to turn off the gravity force. Uh, for the sake of the video, I'm going to be spawning in like 250 uh, particles instead, and we're going to be making the sprite size like a fair bit larger here, just so that you guys can see properly. And now we have this uh, burst that goes in all directions. So we have effectively two ways to kill particles. And they're both going to, for the most part, be happening in particle updates. If we look into kill particles, we have kill particles and kill particles in volume. Of course, let's first talk about the normal kill particles. This is just a ball. Should this particle be killed? If I set this to true, all particles will be killed every frame. So the moment they spawn, they die. It's not particularly useful, is it? But there we get back to this handy dandy little drop down menu that we've talked about before. And we can set a bool by float comparison. There's also a couple of other different things that we can do, like boolean and operation, like doing and operations or 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 axle or whatever. Uh, for the most part, you're just going to be comparing float A to flow B and seeing if your condition is met. And you can, of course, nest that with a couple of different comparisons and do some like bool logic with that. But for the most part, you're just checking, hey, is value A something in relation to value B? If so, kill this particle. So for instance, right here, what we could do is we could go into the parameters and we could get the particle attributes. And in here, I think we have a velocity, right? So we can check its velocity. And we're going to be checking this in uh, the X channel uh, for now, right? So you can see uh, now if our A, which is our velocity X channel, is greater than B, which is zero, uh, we kill the particle. Which means that anything that is traveling in the positive X direction at all gets killed. And wouldn't you know it, we only have particles moving in that direction uh, away from the origin. And of course, we can also set this to Z, which means that we'll only have particles going downward. We can set this to Y, and I guess at this point you kind of like get the message, right? We can set up our own logic to decide whether or not a particle should die. Now, I wish that I could show you that there's also a speed parameter, but there seems to not be. So the way we could probably do that is to uh, just add a bunch of floats together. So we can add float A to float B, and float B will be addition of floats as well. And if we just add all of these together, and we make sure that they're all absolute floats uh, as well, so that they're never negative. So our absolute floats, and then we can get the velocity. So let's see velocity right here. You can just plop that right over in there for the X, and then one for the Y as well. And then we'll also get an absolute float for this one. So absolute float velocity Z. Now it's adding the absolute velocity for the X, Y, and Z. And when that is greater than zero, uh, it kills the particle. Of course, that's always going to be greater than zero. So let's say when it is greater than a thousand, it doesn't kill any of the particles because they never get to this kind of speed. Because we're checking whether or not A, which is all of these things added together, is greater than a value of a thousand. So does a particle travel at a velocity, X, Y, and Z combined, of greater than 1,000? And the answer is going to be no. But now, if we change this to being A is less than B, uh, it's not going to be spawning anything, because it's going to be deleting anything under a speed of 1,000. So if I set this back to zero, 
you see nothing happens. If we set this to like 100, some of the particles start popping out of existence because they get dragged down too much by the drag. Speaking of which, if I increase the drag to like a value of, I don't know, let's say 2, you can see the particles start dying a lot quicker because they're getting slowed down to below a thousand units of velocity much much quicker this is a very customizable way to kill your particles off and you can do like a lot of custom logic for this that's really nice uh it's also not the one that i really want to focus on today because i've explained everything i need to explain about it at this point what i want to focus on because i personally like a lot more is the kill particles in volume instead so here we can say if a particle overlaps with, in this case, a sphere, or a box, or a plane, or a slab, or a cone, or whatever, if it overlaps with any of those shapes, we're just gonna kill it. And right now, it's killing everything because it's overlapping uh, with them because it's starting at 0, 0, 0. We have an origin offset. Let's offset this to like 150, uh, or maybe even just 50 units in the Z, and make the radius for this a little bit smaller. And we'll be able to see if we pay like really close attention uh, maybe lower this down even a little bit more, that some of these particles will start dying when they start hitting that area. Let's put down the drag back to what it was, and we'll be able to uh, start seeing some particles die pretty soon. There we go. So now some of the particles are dying whenever they hit this volume. We can probably put this back up a little bit more, and uh, so on and so forth. So let's give them a little bit more initial velocity so that they can reach it a little bit more. And then if I increase the scale here, you'll start seeing that we have a little bit of a divot here. Because anytime any of the particles reach within this volume, they get immediately killed. Which can be really, really useful. If you have like a plane that you want to set up, you can do a lot of this stuff procedurally as well. Of course, setting it through code, how big this radius should be. So when they hit a certain part of a mesh, you can have a kill shape overlapping with that and then they die when they hit that mesh, and so on and so forth. That can be very, very useful. Personally, I like using it the other way around. We've got this invert volume, and if we set this just to 0, 0, 0 right now, now, as long as they're inside of the shape, they will survive. But the moment they try to go outside of the shape, uh, they die. So let's increase the sphere radius here to like 250 instead, and you can see that this uh, creates a very clean line where they all die, because of course we're doing this in a sphere shape. If we do this in a box shape, you will see that they um, die a lot more, well, in the shape of a square, obviously. We have this box size uh, that we can change in X, Y, and Z individually, so let's say maybe we do this like 900, and up and down, they have a lot of room to move, but side to side, not so much. And that really helps you creating uh, certain shapes for your particle system. Like at this point, this kind of looks like a cone, and there's a lot more like going on in the center here compared to the top and the bottom. So that can create interesting looking shapes. And then if we add in, uh, in the particle update, something that makes it look a little bit more interesting even, like a uh, vortex force will often do that. And we set the origin pool amount, uh, to something higher. I don't think we've talked about vortex forces before. Let's talk about it a little bit. A vortex force is a force that adds rotational movement to your particles. It does both rotational movement, but also pushes it away from the origin point. The origin pool amount is the amount that it gets pulled back. So if we set this to a high number, it will prevent the particles from going out as far, and if we set it to a really high number, it'll actually start sucking particles back in, like at 500 something, right? Uh, we can see that it starts sucking particles back in, and now we have a really neat little effect, where any particles that get shot out too far anyway, they just kind of get killed. And with the next video, we're going to be talking about particle events, we can actually make some use of that, and that can be really, really quite cool. Now, if we change this from spawn burst instantaneous, by the way, to a spawn rate instead, that will probably be a little bit better for an effect like this. So let's say that we are spawning 150 units uh, per second instead. And now you can kind of get to see uh, how this works. It's quite nice, quite fun. Next time, let's build upon this with particle events. Uh, one of the most important ones is particle death. You can do things whenever a particle dies, and that is really, really exciting. But for now, we're going to keep it to this, 
relatively straightforward. Next time there's a lot of things to talk about because particle events are probably one of the most awesome and exciting things uh, to make your particle systems look very fancy fairly easily. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 